Okay, now, how many of you have ever heard of this term, synoptic gospels? Synoptic go gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. That means that they are similar, synonyms, synoptic. It's pretty much the same stories. John is not a synoptic gospel because he covers things nobody else covers. You, you don't see the water being turned into wine anywhere else but John. You don't see Lazarus anywhere else but John, so he's got his own stuff. But these synoptic gospels, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading two separate portions of scripture, but it's actually the same story. But how many of you know one word can change the whole conversation? Shawnee asked me something the other day. She said, do you want to do this? I said, well, we can just do it. She said, don't worry about it. I said, why? She said, because you said just. Verse one. <laughs> Crystal said, that's a good word. She's teaching you, Reverend. That's a good word. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft. In other words, they were thinking of a scheme to get him and put him to death. And they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, a very precious oil, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. Here's what I wanted to get to, verse 4. Y'all ever heard somebody say, they say it. <laughs> and there were some that had indignation within themselves. Somebody, I don't know who it was. It was, it was them. Everybody say it was them. Yeah. All right, now let's, let's go to Matthew, because Matthew, he ain't scared. Matthew said, no, go to verse 8. Ma Matthew said, I want you to go to verse 8 in Matthew. He says, no, it wasn't them. Matthew said, it was them disciples <laughs> that had indignation in them. Mark says... So maybe, maybe um, Mark, you know, was related to somebody who told a story and he wanted to protect somebody. Matthew said, no, nah, I'm a truth teller. It wasn't, it wasn't them. It was us. It was us. So, so the lady broke the oil on Jesus and, and Mark said somebody was uh, upset. Matthew says, no, actually it was the twelve. It was his close people that was upset about how valuable somebody perceived him to be. Do you know that some people's problem with you is that other people don't have one? Do you know that some people are only satisfied when other people see you the way they've experienced you? Somebody told me one time and said, somebody don't like you. I said, he shouldn't. I fired him. <laughs> He's he supposed to be saying something bad. He got fired. Did he tell you why? No. He just told you he didn't like me. So, so you don't, don't appraise somebody else based on somebody else's experience. Are you listening to me? All right. Now I want you to go to Isaiah 53 and 7. 53 and 7. Here is the scripture. The Bible says he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Do you know you don't have to say something every time? Somebody offends you. Some people think they just have to say something when they're offended. But he never said. This is what grandmama, when she was telling you, he never said a mumbling word, this is where she, you'd be like, the Bible say he never said, it, it, the word mumble ain't even in the Bible, I don't know if it is, but he never said anything about his oppressors. Now, here's the topic. I want to talk to you today on what I've chosen to call trusted with trouble. How many of y'all have trouble in your life right now of any kind? Did you know? 
that God gives his biggest battles to his best soldiers. And you wouldn't be going through what you're going through if God couldn't trust you with that kind of trouble. Fist bump your neighbor on the way to the seat and say, God, trust you with the trouble. In the field of farming, any farmers in the house? Yep, nobody, okay. I don't know what we're going to do when the world end, black people, because we ain't got no corn or nothing, nowhere. We just go to the store. We need some black farmers. Um, in the field of farming, um, Chad, there is something called the Judas goat. Um, the Judas goat <clears throat> is a goat um, that is trained and mentored to betray the sheep by the owner. The Judas goat gets in the group makes the sheep believe he's a sheep. He does all of the sheep stuff. But his whole goal, the reason why he has the job, is to lead the sheep to the slaughter. And once he leads all of the sheep to the slaughter, there is another door that the Judas goat gets to go out of goes back and is rewarded by the owner. The owner picks the Judas goat up, takes him into another circle of sheep so he can repeat the same cycle of deceit. He spends all of his time getting the sheep to trust him because he sounds like the sheep. He starts to walk like the sheep. He even befriends other sheep in the sheep circle. So he starts to be sponsored by other sheep. By that I mean, you should meet brother goat. Brother goat, sister sheep. Building trust. And all other sheep look at the goat and say, he's bad. Get it? So he gets in the group. And all of a sudden, everybody's trusting Judas Goat. And Judas Goat leads the other lambs to the slaughter. And they lose their head because they used their heart. You and I can already feel this this cycle of deceit, it feels familiar to be because the Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. And so the Judas goat doesn't just make his way into the field. He'll make his way into the family. You got people in your family you can't trust. He doesn't just make his place in war. He, he also finds himself in worship. Every, every one of you, if you got a job somewhere, it's somebody on your job you shouldn't get too close to. <clears throat> and you know it. You know it, but, but there's a draw. Something pulls you in. And have you ever been around somebody you knew the whole time? This ain't... This don't feel right, but, but because they come highly recommended or because they have a certain position or because... They, they're connected to a certain person. You find yourself lock and step with somebody you know you don't have anything in common with. That's the Judas goat. He, he or she, very cunning. Knows how to get attention through influence. And, and, and again, like I said, in Isaiah 53 and 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. And I've come to tell you that there are Judas goats all around you. That the enemy has planted in your life to lead you to the slaughter. To lead you to a place that looks promising but will be painful. 
to lead you to a place where it looks like you're about to get what you want, but the whole time it's about them getting what they want. Who am I talking to so far in this place? And the art of war, this art of war, predates Judas Iscariot. We're going to get there. Um, if you go and read your Bible, you will go to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, there is a man named Elkanah. He has two wives. One is Hannah, one is Penina. And uh, Penina um, is the wife that is productive. She's having children. He loves Hannah more, but Hannah can't produce. I'm just telling you, don't get an attitude with me. Some people settle for you because you're productive, not because they love you. <clears throat> You'll be thinking it's love. It's actually productivity. It's what you do. And once you cannot do that anymore, they will lead you like a lamb to the slaughter. So Penina, she's having children. I mean, she's already three kids in. And Hannah has none. And so now the Judas goat or the spirit of the Judas goat enters into Elkanah's house. And Penina knows that in that day that for a woman not to have a child, let alone not to be able to produce a son, was an embarrassment. So she was going around the house talking about, you can't have one. You might be his favorite wife, but I'm the one giving him the kids. Y'all yeah, know how some women can be. Come on, holler at me, ladies. Y'all know, and, and I'm saying it like because I can't think like a woman, but you know what some of your girlfriends will say. And she's making Hannah feel bad. And Hannah, Hannah now has the Judas goat in her house because one of his favorite doors is the door of insecurity. He enters into the door of insecurity. Um, and, and here is why insecurity is difficult. You need to write this down. Uh, some of our thoughts are backed up by so much insecurity that they create lies that we believe. So you, you're insecure, somebody says something about you and you start believing what they said about you because you're insecure. That means you have no security on that door. No inner security. So now, now you have Judas goats walking through your insecurity because they know exactly what you want. They know exactly what you wish for and they know you don't have it right now. So they work on you on your deficiencies. And this is the door that the Judas goat walks right into Hannah's house. Y'all better follow me today. And now she feels insecure and uncomfortable in her own space. She doesn't feel comfortable in her own space. When, when this woman is with her husband and it was legal at this time, so don't, don't write me. They were allowed to have multiple wives in that time. And if you know anything about Utah, you can do it today. I have to do that because people be online talking about I was preaching polygamy and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I just cleared it up. She, they were, they were, they were allowed to do this so she got Hannah walking around the house feeling insecure Hannah says to the Lord Lord if you give me a child I ain't just gonna have a baby I'm gonna sanctify him and I'm gonna serve you and I'm gonna worship you and all of a sudden the Bible says her womb was open can I tell you something? I know that people have said all kinds of things about you. I know they have done all kinds of things to you, but I just want to drop a little note right here. God is looking. God is looking. The Bible says that a sparrow won't fall to the ground without the father seeing him. She can't have any children. She prays to the Lord. She says, Lord, if you give me a baby, I'll worship you. All of a sudden, her womb opens up and she begins to conceive and to have children. I'm going to show you how the script flip before we get into the text. By the time this story is over, Hannah is having babies and Peninnah's babies are dying. And when she gets down to her last two children, she goes to Hannah and says, can you please ask your God? To save my last two children. Can I tell you something? 
it ain't going to be long before the people who were praying on you are going to start asking you to pray for them. She asked the woman who didn't have a baby for the longest, can you ask the God who opened up your womb to save my last two children? She asked the God of Hannah to get involved in her affairs. And, and we will want to be getting even and we want to we want to make it be known that that we're not a pushover and that 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 we'll stand up for ourselves. But sometimes you got to stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Now she needs the girl she was talking about. Oh, they're going to need you. Just touch your neighbor and say, don't, don't be, become my enemy because God will make sure you need me. He, he'll, make, he'll make sure you... I'll end up buying the company you work for if you mess with me. I, I'll, I'll end up being on the homeowners association uh, and, 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 and I, God will put me in a place. Just do me a favor and say, neighbor, you better watch out for me. You better watch out for me. I might not look like much right now, but God ain't through with me yet. You, you, don't judge me by the car I drove here in. Don't judge me by my clothes. Don't judge me by my purse. My clothes is not my power. It's what's inside of me. <laughs> Hannah has children. Not only, Pastor Rima, does she have a child. She has one boy whose name is Samuel. Oh, and Samuel is the one that became the priest who picked David, who was in the line of Jesus Christ. You can have five of anything, but God will give me one thing that'll be better than everything you've ever had. How many of you know that if you learn the right way to struggle, there is a Samuel in your struggle. There, there, is a, there is a Samuel. Somebody say there's a Samuel in my struggle. By that I mean there is something in you so powerful that for generations to come, God will use it. And we will all know who you are in history because of what came through you. Many of you met Judge Carlos today. And, and, and him being the president of the Black Bar Association, uh, National Association of Bar, all, all that's good. But, but watch this. Look at his legacy. He's, he's also uh, one of the leading people in the Cochrane firm. You, you see what I mean by, by legacy? You see, 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 he didn't know when he was where he was or, or, or where he was born or where he went to high school or who he met, who was going to introduce him to person X, Y, and Z. But God knew that this position was in his future. And sometimes we get discouraged in our past because we don't know the details of our tomorrow. But if you just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and let Penina say whatever she wants to and let your enemies do whatever they want to, but one day God's going to burst something out of you that will be so powerful the world will not be able to forget you. Those are the people that this sermon is for this morning. And if you are not Hannah, you can go to sleep, but if you are the person everybody looked over, rolled over, talked about, lied on, wouldn't help. The person that people whisper about behind closed doors. The people who, the person that people want to be around when it's convenient, but not when it's time to help. If I'm talking to you, holler at your boy in this place. I need to know if you've ever been used, if you've ever been talked about, if you've ever been deceived, if you've ever been lied on, if you've ever been rejected, and you're trying to figure out what God was doing. This message was given to me by God to tell you that every time you were crying, I was trusting you with those tears. Because those tears are going to produce a glory, but it can only come through a womb that I can trust. Do you know that some people will not be pregnant, not because they're not productive, but because they can't be trusted? And I'm talking about in the spirit. God says, I ain't putting no business in you because I can't trust you with a million dollars. I'm not going to put influence in you because I can't trust you not to get arrogant when people know your name. So I'm going to give the trouble to somebody that I can trust because the glory is going to come to somebody I can trust. Frederick Douglass said it best, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. 
If you don't struggle and you don't strain, you can't succeed. The only thing success respects is struggle. And to whom much is given. Oh, God, I wish I had a church. To whom much is given, much is required. How many of y'all had a whole lot of struggle over your life? Just, just do me a favor. Introduce your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you don't have no clue, dog. Bro, you don't even know. You don't even know. My uncle tried to touch me when I was a kid. You don't know. You don't know. I got alcoholics in my family, and I struggle not to be one. You don't know. We got, we got drug addicts in our family. You don't know. The spirit of murder is on. I got family members in jail. You don't know. I've got cousins that have been shot. You don't know. There are prostitutes in our family. You don't know. There are kind of, but I'm here by the grace of God because he trusted me with the trouble. Don't get it twisted. I don't look like where I come from. I don't look like what I've been through. I raised myself. I, how many of y'all, I used to come home in the house and have to feed myself and watch over myself. I've been on my own since I was 14. Whatever your testimony is. You, you sit next to somebody who saw murder, not on TV. No, you, you, you sit next to people who saw bricks at the crib. And I ain't talking about clay ones. Holla, holla at your boy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you just, you ain't even, I don't know who you is. Have you ever asked yourself, I ain't even started preaching yet. I miss y'all, so we might be here for a little bit. Have you ever, have you ever asked yourself why the devil is after you? Have you ever been like, I ain't bothering nobody? Don't come for me unless I send for you. Like, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't bothering you, devil. Why? Because you must understand that Satan's problem with you predates you. His issue with you ain't got nothing to do with you. So don't let that make you haughty. Brother Charles, Satan's problem with you predates you. And let me tell you why he doesn't like you. It's not because you have a good job. It ain't because you got a nice house. You know, people, he hating on me because I'm cute. No, you, 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 you all right, you know. But somebody else will look right past you and won't pay you no attention. You know, some people think that everybody, they everybody type. Let me tell you something. <laughs> You ain't everybody tight. You talking about, I need to lose weight. This is a brother like, no, baby, keep it, please. Keep it. One of my pastor's friends told me, this is just free. He said his wife kept telling him, baby, I need to change this and I need to change that. And he said, baby, please stop saying that. Don't change how I see you. He said, hey, I don't see what you see. And stop complaining about it because I don't see it. So don't make me have to see you through your eyes. Nope. I thought that was good information. I gave it. It ain't got nothing to do with the message. It just came to my head. So the reason the devil doesn't like you predates you. Okay, this is what happened. This, I'm about to tell you why he don't like you. You ready? It's not because you got a degree. I'm glad you got one. That ain't it. It's not because you got a great job, that ain't it. I'm glad you have one. It's not because you got a nice car. Not because you can wear clothes well. This is why he doesn't like you. In antiquity, there was a choir in heaven. And Satan was the minister of music. And he was directing the choir. One day the worship got so amazing that the choir started to bow in worship. And Satan thought they were bowing to him. And he started to get arrogant. What he didn't know is that God was standing behind him. And when they saw God, they began to bow. But he thought they were bowing to him. 
And so now he thinks he's God. I'm a jealous God. And I'll not have any other God before me. And now the spirit of the Judas goat enters into heaven because the Bible says that Satan influences one third of the angels. He leads 33% of the angels right out of heaven. <laughs> and now 33% of the angels are now in the belly of hell waiting on the great white throne judgment of the seat of God because they followed the Judas goat. You better be, you better be careful who you follow. And I mean that literally. Be careful who you hit follow on Facebook. Be careful who you follow on Instagram. Be careful who you follow on Twitter because you will be led astray. I, I've not seen so many people in my lifetime who think that they are actually looking at the news when they look at an Instagram post. People will make up stuff and say stuff like this. Um, the United States government has only given historically black colleges. They reduced their funding from this amount all the way down to this amount. And you have black people all over the world talking about, I hate the government when black people have gotten more money in this cycle. I know you didn't know that but because you, you read a post created by somebody who was incentivized by misinformation. Judas go anyway so they lead them out of heaven and now Satan got 33% of Jesus's click with him so I want you to know that 33% of the people you are around right now you cannot trust I know you've been knowing them since high school I know y'all been singing the same song but you have to be careful with who can be influenced by the Judas goat. And so now Satan is upset with you because now worship is a little off. And so God says, I need a replacement. So he bends down in the dirt and he creates man for the sole purpose of worshiping him. So now we worship him. And so now Satan has a problem with the image of God because you are his replacement. And so the reason why Satan doesn't like you is you have his old job. I'm getting ready to help you. Write this down if you don't hear anything else I say. You will be mishandled by anybody who is insecure and views you as a suitable alternative to them. That is heavy if you didn't hear what I said. It don't mean they won't try to be your friend. It just won't last because every time they see you, they see you as an alternative to them. If they wish they were. And your image becomes an issue for them because of who you are. But can I get everybody here to shout? This? I'm not responsible for my anointing. I, I didn't create this swag. I was given it. Just look at your neighbor and say, it ain't my fault I'm swaggy. I, 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 I was made like this. Just look at your neighbor and say, I was made like this. I was made like this. Baby, don't get mad at me. Don't get upset with me. I know I look good. I know I look fly. But it ain't my fault. God made me this way. And let me tell you something. You something. If you saw other people in my family, I don't even look like them. Because God was intentional about making me this way. Everybody in my family is light. I am dark. I don't know why. Everybody is dark. I am light. I don't know why. Everybody Everybody's tall, but I'm short. Everybody's short, but I'm tall. I don't know why I was made this way, but he intentionally made me this way, and it ain't my fault. Did I do that? <laughs> Just ask your neighbor, say, I didn't do it. It ain't my fault. I was made like this. I was made like this. It's, it's, it's not my fault that I'm anointed. It's not my fault. Just look at them. Say, it ain't my fault. I, I, it's, it's not my fault that I can compute things like that. It's not my fault that, that, that people are attracted to me. It's not my fault that business deals come my way. But it was my trouble. Yeah, you want what I got, but you ain't willing to struggle how I struggled. 
People will see your glory, but they don't know your story. I need everybody who will say, I went through something to get here. I lost some stuff to get here. I struggled to get here. All of the people who survived something, make some noise in this place. Satan is in rebellion to God's decision. So the moment God chose you, Satan despised you. I remember the day I met Bishop Jakes, and he started mentoring me. I was all excited. Brother Carlos, he looked at me and said something I will never forget. He said, now, son, I think I should warn you. He said, if I mentor you and help you, you will get all of my friends. But I hate to also tell you, you will also get my enemies. Anybody who has great influence also has great attack. And what you must understand is that every blessing that you get has destruction Velcro to it. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. And when people look at you and they don't know how you survived, it's because I've been trusted with the trouble. Do you know that the things that you went through, other people wouldn't have survived? And they sit next to you right now, they don't know. You got your hands lifted. You praising God. And in the last five years, you've been divorced, lost a parent, lost a job, lost a house, lost a car. And you're still in here worshiping the Lord. And the enemy is perpetually after you because he's after your worship. Because remember, when she worshiped, her womb was open. When she worshiped, she got pregnant. When she said, Lord, I'll, I'll consecrate my body if you'll give me a male son. And all of a sudden she started worshiping and things opened. And that's why you see me in church all the time saying worship because I know what worship will open. Yeah. I, I know what worship will break. And sometimes I look at people in church and they're so disenfranchised by their trouble. They don't understand that worship is the antidote to the war that they're in. And the redeemer of the Lord ought to say so, not nod so, clap so, or wave so, but say so. That's why I always tell you to open up your mouth because there is something in your praise that the enemy cannot stand. And when you worship, things begin to open up and things begin to flow and things begin to break. Not because the music is hot, not because I said something that got your attention, but just because he's good. I worship everywhere. I, I text my mom the other day. Uh, probably about 9 o'clock at night, she texted me back about 12.30. And I know she get up at 5 or 6. So I said, what you doing up? She said, talking to the Lord. Yeah. Talking to the Lord. If I were to ask you what you doing up at 1, what's your answer going to be? Come on now, don't, don't, don't put your head down now. We're we, we family now. <laughs> Ask Sarah, what would happen if you trust him? He'll give you Isaac. Ask Elizabeth what would happen if you trust him. He'll give you a baby at 80. Ask Hannah what will happen if you trust him. Do you know the Bible says that he gave Mary Jesus? Jesus. And the Bible says he chose Mary. The fact that God chose Mary means that he had other options. This is why the enemy hates you. It's because God had other options and he still came back to you. Somebody say, I'm chosen. Somebody say it again. Say, I'm chosen. Now, God, with his infinite wisdom, he knows. Now we're into destruction. I'm done. He goes into it and says, all right, here we go. 
Now we're at the story. There are all of these disciples around. And this woman comes with her oil. And she says that Jesus is worthy of her breaking a year's worth of wages at his feet. Pow! Breaks it. All the oil flows. Now, Mark says, some people are like, he ain't worth all of that. He ain't worth all of that. He's not worth all of that. Now, what really happened is it was actually the disciples who actually said he isn't worth all of that because I've discovered you can never be betrayed by people who are not close to you. You cannot. You cannot. And, and he couldn't. Now, the disciples are arguing who's the greatest among them. They're arguing about who's the greatest. This is why they can't be trusted with the trouble because they're trying to figure out who the greatest among them is. But, but the, the reason why they can't be trusted with this trouble is because of the personalities they have prior to the trouble. Judas is actually a part of God's plan, but everybody doesn't know how to handle Judas. Peter would have cut his ear off. Uh huh. I'm getting ready to show you why he can't trust you with the trouble. Because look at your reaction to the trouble you already have. When Peter had trouble in, in when they were bringing the Sanhedrin council, he pulls a knife out, cuts his ears off. When Peter has trouble, he denies him and says, I don't know him. He says it three times. All of the other disciples, one of them was a tax collector. He would have been collecting money. All of the people who wanted to be the greatest may have had a resume, but they couldn't be trusted with trouble. See, God is looking at how you act when you feel small. He's looking at how you act when you feel angry. He's looking at how you act when the group shows up. He's looking for how you act on the job when other people get a raise and you don't get a raise. He's looking for how you act when nobody pats you on the back for what you did. He's looking for how you act when somebody didn't say thank you for something that you did. He's looking for how you acted when you didn't understand. And sometimes you lock yourself out of a prosperous future because you acted in poverty in your present. When you have a poor reaction, you will have a poor tomorrow. Help me in this place today. Now I am ready to preach. You will cancel your tomorrow because you had a poor reaction today. I want to talk to people who will admit, Pastor, I acted poorly when I was confronted with that. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. I'm trying to show you why you are not where you wanted to be because you acted poorly when you had a Judas moment. Oh, this is a good. This is good. That's why I told you this one was for everybody. I didn't intend to shout you. I'm trying to help you. Do you understand how poorly you react? Is determined why he picked somebody else. Yahweh knew that Jesus was the only one who could handle Judas properly. This is what Jesus said to Judas. Friend, whatever you came to do. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. He called the guy who was about to kiss him and didn't mean it. He called the guy who was about to turn him over to the Sanhedrin council. He called the guy who was about to disrupt his future. Friend? Meanwhile, here go Peter. Talking about where they at? I'm about it, cuz. I got this knife. Who wants some of my G's? Who, who coming to mess with my Jesus? I tell you what. First person step up getting cut. Come on, come on. Guy steps up. Peter cut his ear off. You would think that the Lord would look at Peter and say, Peter, I'm so thankful that you did that. The Lord looked at Peter and said, Satan, get behind me. Oh, God, I wish I had a... The person who cut a man's ear off for him, he called Satan. But the person that betrayed him, he called friend. Why? Because a friend ain't never helped you get to destiny. You don't pray like you pray because you got ten friends. You pray like you pray because you got one enemy you ain't figured out how to deal with. It's your enemies that get you to the cross. It's your enemies that get you to the next level. Here's how the Bible says, he will make your enemies your... Your problem is you want a lot of people around you that you like. 
And God says, I'm not going to give you a lot of people that you like. I'm going to give you some people that try your patience because that's where I get the glory from. How you react to the Judas go. Help me in this church, Lord. How you react to that gossiping spirit? How do you act to that long tongue lying devil? How do you act to that person who looking at you out the corner of your eye the whole time y'all at dinner together? How you act around that girl you know talking about you, but you got to fake it when you get around her? And since you keep it real so much, you can't be trusted with trouble. Because you keep it real. You let everybody know how you feel. You let everybody know. I'm just honest and direct and also at the bottom. Jesus sat with the man for three years, knew what he was going to do, and never told anybody. Because sometimes it is not your job to talk about the people who cause you trouble. He sat with him for three years, ate with him every dinner, never said nothing. Look at God. Three years, he handled it because he knew Judas was the only one that was going to get him to the cross. He says, I must need suffer the gospel, and I understand Judas' role in my life. So if I got to eat with him, I'm going to eat with him. If I got to walk with him, I'll walk with him. If I got to be seen with him, I'll be seen with him. If I got to take a picture with him, I'll take a picture with him. And I ain't going to say nothing about the Judas goat until it's time. And then all of a sudden one day, after three years, he says, uh, by the way, uh, the one who uh, dips with me uh, in this fondue is going to be the one to betray me. And, and here is what everybody's saying. Hey, watch this. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Which means that everybody in your circle has the potential to betray you. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking. <laughs> Judas, Judas, he calls friend. When is the last time you've been thankful for a heathen? When is the last time you've been thankful for somebody? Who get on your nerve? You hear me, Pop? He'll be like, Lord, thank you for this person who makes me watch and pray. If it's one thing, and I'll be right here with you. If it's one thing that I despise, it's betrayal. I despise it. But Jesus says to me and to you, you better learn to love it. Because let me tell you something. Betrayal is actually belief. <laughs> right? Jesus invited all of the disciples. Am I helping anybody? Jesus invited all of the disciples to come to the grave on Sunday. He's like, look, I'm going to tear this temple down, and in three days, I'm going to build it back up. I want all of y'all to be there with me. None of them jokers showed up. When he had to carry the cross, Andrew wasn't there. It was a man named Simon of Cyrene. It wasn't even a disciple that helped him carry the cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? It wasn't even, it wasn't even, a, he had 12 home, none of them showed up. Now, we know why Judas didn't show up. To the cross, he had an excused absence. <laughs> he was somewhere hanging from a tree. He was dead. We know why he didn't show up. And I, there are people in your life, there's a reason why they didn't show up. But can I, what happened to the other 11? I, 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 I know why you didn't show up for me because you were going through something. But what about your friends that were not? I know you didn't help me because you ain't have it, but you had it. Why didn't you? Judas didn't show up. When Jesus got out of the grave, it was a woman named Mary that was there. When, when Jesus died, the Bible says Joseph of Arimathea, he was the pallbearer and the mortician. He carried the body and embalmed it. Not James the lesser. The question is, where is your crew? 
Where are all of these people you cut for when you're getting cut? It's because you've been thanking the wrong people. You owe every teacher who didn't believe in you a thank you. Every person who wrote you off and discarded you a thank you. This church has grown not just because of the people who came, but because of the people who left. Do you know how many people stay when the Judas goat is gone? Did you hear what I said? There, there are some people who follow Judas goats. That's why when people leave our church, I don't get sad. I say, well, Lord, got something else for them to do. The only people I have a problem with in church is the ones who want to leave, but they stay. If you want to leave and you stay, now I got a problem. If you want to leave, bye. If you want to stay, we can roll and do this thing together. But you have to learn that every person in your life is not meant to be at the end of the story. They were only supposed to be a chapter, and you want them on the last page. Yep. Judas, this is where you get off. You served your purpose. Jesus, a little petty, said, I got to let you know I knew. <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm stupid. I, I knew who you was the whole time. Judas goes and hangs himself. Now, can I show you something? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but I, I, the Lord showed me this and I almost lost my mind. Tatiana, the whole time I have thought that the story of Judas and the story of the woman with the oil were two separate stories. I, I never knew this. I ain't going to front. I always read them individually. Marcia, the Bible says that the woman broke the oil. And if we would have just listened to Mark, we wouldn't have known what actually happened. Mark said, some were indignant. Matthew says, no, nah, dog. It wasn't some. It was you church people. It wasn't, it wasn't the newspaper that started this room on Jesus. It was his own people. And the Bible says that after she broke the oil, Judas got up and left. Look, anytime you see when the Bible says, and then it is referencing what just happened. She broke the oil and then Judas left. Because when she, listen, they start arguing. Why would you waste that oil on him? That's a year's worth of wages. We could have put that in the treasury for something else. What Judas was actually saying is, I don't think he's worth that much. And once somebody else decided he was, he couldn't stand it. So he left because people who cannot handle how other people value you. Can't stay around to see other people give you adoration. So he left because he couldn't stand how somebody else valued him. Do you know that some people's problem with you is that others don't have one? He got upset. I wish I could have been there. Because if I was there and I had been Jesus that day, I would have said, um, Judas, I didn't ask for this oil. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask for her to think I was worth her entire year's savings. Obviously. She saw something in me that you missed. You better make sure in the next season of your life that the person who walked away from you know what they're missing. You better do something with your life. 
Did you look at me? You better do something so strong and so big with your life that they have to sit on the couch and say, that's the one that got by. Man, I should have just stayed in there a little bit longer. I should have. I should have been a little more patient. I should have prayed a little bit harder. Do something with your life that makes them regret turning you away and turning you over. That means getting better and not bitter. The difference between the woman and Judas. Here's the difference. The woman used her money to gain access to Jesus. Judas used his access to Jesus to get money. Did y'all hear what I said? The woman said, I got this, and I'm going to use that to get to him. Judas said, I got him, so I'm going to use him to get to that you will always be betrayed by people who earn off of you you missing you just missed it the reason why the woman didn't betray him is because her life wasn't connected to earning from him she got it from somewhere else but you got to be careful with people whose lives are tied to your success. He used, his, he used his proximity to Jesus to get paid. That's why you have to be careful when people don't have anything when they show up. I ain't saying you got to have money, but at least have a good spirit. Just, that's, that's a good offering. Be genuine. That'll work. Just be loyal. That's fine. You don't, have to, you don't have to come with a whole lot of money, but just have something to offer. Judas used his proximity to get what he wanted. It, go, it happens to me all the time. People always say, well, I'll say, why did y'all do this? Well, pastor said, well, when? When did I say it? People will use their proximity to you and then go tell it. I, I, somebody came up to me the other day and was like, man, I'm getting ready to hire somebody. And I was like, okay. He's like, you don't sound excited. I was like, who is he? He said, well, he said he worked for you. When? So I called Jackie on the phone. I said, did we ever have somebody? Because y'all may have forgotten. Do we ever have somebody to, to work for us by this name? She said, no, but let me check the record. She looks through the record through the history of the church. We've never seen the person's name on any database. And they got a job from somebody because that person thought that they were close to me. You have to be careful with people who use proximity to you to get what they want. They gave Judas a 30 pieces of silver. He realized it wasn't worth it. He tried to take it back to him. They said, no, Judas, that's yours. Because they couldn't accept the money back in the temple because it had been used to buy blood. And now, listen, the money is now spent, according to the Bible, on the potter's field. The place where all of the dead, unidentified bodies are. When you betray the wrong person, you devalue the gift you received. Thirty pieces of silver couldn't get him nothing but a valley of dry bones, because he because he betrayed life. He could only buy death. You better make sure if you're gonna betray somebody, it better not be the wrong person, because it will devalue everything he has given you. It's best for you to leave that person completely. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor, leave me alone now. Leave me alone. I ain't bothering nobody. Leave me alone. 
Leave me alone. I, I don't bother nobody. Leave me alone. Because the oil that's on my life, the blessings that are on my life, the things that God has done for me, the things that he's going to do with me, leave me alone. I've been trusted with trouble, and now I'm getting ready to go to the next dimension. I want you to stand on your feet because I want to minister to you right now. How many of y'all ever heard of King David? You, you know David... David didn't become a great king because of his friends. It was, it was Saul and Goliath that pushed him into his destiny. Joseph would have never got to Pharaoh's palace if his brothers didn't throw him in the pit. Go Read your Bible all the way through. Every person that we rah-rah about, somebody tried to kill him before they got there. Trusted with trouble. How do you respond to affliction? I can tell you right now, I'm not selling wolf tickets. People in here who know this story. Sarge, I will never forget when I got to Houston. People thought I got here with this grand scheme. They picked me up from the airport in a red pickup truck that belonged to the man who cut the grass for the church. They threw my suitcase in the back of the truck. It had grass bags in it. Took me to the La Quinta Inn. And it had bed bugs in it when I got there. Well, you can't do that to me, man. I should have known then. What my appraised value was. But because I was so ambitious. And number two. I consulted with my mother and biological father, and they both told me this seems like what the Lord wants you to do, but they could only make their decision based on what I told them. Picked me up in the truck that they used to cut the grass, the lawnmowers. My, my suitcase is in the back with the lawnmowers. Take me to the La Quinta Inn. I look in the bed, and I see these bugs on the side of the bed. But I ain't got no money to go nowhere else. So my first night in Houston, I slept in a chair. Called my mama on the phone crying. I'm like, this ain't it. <laughs> mama, this, this, this ain't it. I need to come back home. She said, oh, no, we, we don't. We don't quit. We don't quit. She said, you ain't coming home. The Lord will send you home, but you ain't coming home. So I I'll stay. So I stayed up all night studying. Because I'm preaching this Sunday, and I know when I go in, I'm going to try to my best to get the people free and preaching. I get there, and I preach that first sermon. 75 people joined the church that Sunday morning. So oh, this feels all right. I get there, I started a service at eight o'clock in the morning with 75 people. And within eight months, there were a thousand people in that service. I was 27 years old. Then the pastor of the church who had a service after mine, he was shrinking. Oz was growing. He walks in the church on a Sunday morning. I'm getting ready to preach. He said, uh, young preacher, I want to let you know I'll be preaching the 8 o'clock service now. And you go to the 10. Okay. I go to the 10 where there are 300. He goes to the 8 where there's 1,000. I start preaching. And 11 became 1,500. And 8 o'clock disappeared. 
on a Sunday morning, just like this, the church is packed. He grabs the microphone, he leaves the stage, and he says, church, I got an announcement. Now, this is a Baptist church, and y'all know they do things different. The Baptist church. He said, uh, just want to let y'all know. Now, I'm, I'm right here where Shawnee is. He says, I just want to let y'all know this will be uh, Brother Henderson's last Sunday here. Somebody stood up in the back of the church and said, hey, I got a question. You told us he was going to be our next pastor. Now, did God lie or did you lie? <laughs> to which the pastor replied, sit down. I didn't ask you to hire him. I don't have to ask you to fire him. Some other lady stands up and she says, What about our children? They love him. To which a lady comes to the front of the church and she says, give me the mic, Pastor. Um, he's been here 33 years. This boy ain't been here but nine months. Y'all really going to choose him over that? The lady shouted, it ain't about quantity, it's about quality. This is on Sunday morning in front of 2,000 people. Now, I'm from Gary, Indiana. I ain't thinking nothing spiritual right now. Hear me? What I'm thinking is, when service over, I'm choking him out. I know he's 65, but that's going to make it easy. I said, the Bible says that David said it was good that I was afflicted. I don't know what's next for me, but I want to thank you for getting me to the cross. Yeah. Shook his hand, grabbed his briefcase and his Gatorade, picked it up, took it to his office like I did every Sunday before. Stood by his door, opened the door, and let him in. Set his briefcase by his desk like I normally would. Put his Gatorade on his desk, and he's looking at me the whole time. Because you know, yeah. black people like, yeah. <laughs> I said, Pastor, if you don't want me here, I don't have to be here. I wish you would have told me before you went public. I said, I only need you to do two things. I need you to just tell the people that I did nothing immoral or illegal to deserve this. And number two, release me to go do what God called me to do. And he obliged on both. Now, you see how all of y'all standing up? I'm walking out of the church. Everybody's crying. People started to shake my hand. They were shaking my hand on the way out. But every time I got a handshake, it was something in it. By the time I got to the back door, I had $6,000 in my pocket <laughs> worth of handshakes. Three days later, the Lord gave me the lighthouse. Three days later. I wonder what would have happened if he couldn't have trusted me with the trouble. I wonder what would have happened had I went to radio stations trying to disperse his character. I wonder what would have happened if I went to preachers meetings trying to disperse his character. I wonder what would have happened. I said nothing. And when we had the first meeting, sir, they wanted to drudge up the conversation. My first Somebody who was there. I wish somebody in here that was there could tell a story. You got to come to church on the north because the people who are old enough to remember this they ain't driving all the way over here. <laughs> come to church next Sunday. I'll tell the same story. I promise you. It would, the whole deaconess road, they're going to be like, I was there. If he couldn't trust me with the trouble, what would happen? I said nothing. In the first meeting, they tried to bring it up. I said, oh, 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 oh. The first rule is that we will not discuss the past. I am not here to talk about what he did to me. I am here to talk about what I can do for you. Yeah. 
And I told them this. And I said, I'm not overly excited about anybody in the room. Because if you will leave him, you will also leave me. So the church went from 132 and shrunk down to 20. And those were my 11. And the 20 of us walked. And in 16 weeks, we had 800. In 12 months, we had 1,500. And to date, we've had 15,000 people walk an aisle and say, I want this to be my church home. We had a sanctuary this size on our third week being a church. This is what it looked like after three weeks of the lighthouse being open. Don't tell me what God can't do. It ain't because I'm smarter than Pastor Raymond. It ain't because I'm smarter than Pastor Hammond. It's not because I'm smarter than Pastor Torrance. They're all brilliant. And they're, I'm only here because he can trust me. Do you, I want you to get this in your head. That the key to your next dimension is the trouble you can be trusted with. Lift your hands. God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that my testimony has been a lamp to somebody's feet, a light to somebody's path. I pray, God, that everybody in this room who is under the relentless hand of the devil, that they would know a couple of things. Number one, this too shall pass. And number two, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you started it, Lord, you can complete it. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. If you believe that the attack of the enemy has been nailed to the cross on your life, I want you to lift your voice and begin to worship him in this place. Come on, come on, give him worship. Give him worship. Come on, 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 if you want to do it, bless the Lord so that your womb can open. Hallelujah. So you clean me up inside. You sacrifice. So I can be. So I can be whole. You thought. So you clean me up inside You thought I was to die for And I'm mighty grateful, Lord yeah. Ooh. Hallelujah Hallelujah Change my life. Yeah. I praise you. I'll worship you. I'll give you praise. I'll give because. Come on, let's worship Lighthouse. Lift your voice and shout. Because you are good to me. Your mercy is everlasting. And your truth endures. Because you thought I was worth saving. You can't change my life. You thought I was.
was worth keeping. So you clean me up inside. So you clean me up inside. Think of this. You died for. Died for. Died for. So you sacrifice. For what reason? Your life so, so I, I could be, be free. So I can be whole. whole. So I can tell everyone I do me a favor. Don't listen to that song and hear free and hear whole and forget to tell everyone that you know. You got to tell everybody if it had not been for Jesus. On my side, I don't know where I would be. I'm getting ready to release you, but I feel something about to happen in this place. Because some of y'all have been through some trouble over the last month. It's unexplainable. It's unfathomable. And you thought you were not going to make it. But how many of you know today? It's only because he was trusting you. With trouble. I feel as if. In my heart of hearts. This is one of the most important messages I've ever preached. Because everybody's always wondering if God can trust me with money. Can he trust me with a family? Can he trust me with a husband? Can he trust me with a wife? But can he trust you with tears? Can he trust you with heartbreak? Can he trust you when somebody's scandalizing your name? Can, you, can he trust you when you've been fired for no cause? Can he trust you when you come home to an empty house? Can he trust you? with trouble who among you knows that he's just trusting you with trouble so you can be free so you can be whole Tell everyone you know Because I am free. One more time, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the God. I will praise you forever, forever, forever and ever, forever, forever. forever. I will worship you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. give you praise. Forever. I'll honor you forever, forever. worth saving so you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping thank you Lord for the clean so you cleaned me up inside you thought I was to die for so you sacrificed your life so I can be free and whole and I will tell everyone I know. Listen, right there. 
Lift your hands. Cry out to God. I'm trying to break something in this room. I'm trying to break that hurt. I'm trying to shatter it. I'm trying to break something. I'm trying to break something. I'm trying to break something. Devil, the blood is against you. I'm trying to break something. I'm trying to break something. I'm trying to break something. Come on, church. I'm trying to break something. Satan, the blood is against you. I'm trying to break something. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Strongholds are being broken. Deliverance is in the room. Come on, church. Something's about to happen. Come on, let the music do it. Let the music do it. Let the music do it. Come on and let it happen. Let it happen. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. 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 Have Somebody's about to get deliverance. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough. Let those tears flow. There's glory in the room. There's glory in the room. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. That's it, church. That's it. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. for a night but God told me that joy is coming in the morning yeah 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 I'm about to give you something to shout for the Bible says that it was in the third year that everybody found out why Judas was in the group the pandemic happened three years ago. God told me to tell you this is the weekend that you found out why it had to happen. Touch somebody and say, you're about to find out why you had to struggle. You're about to find out why you had to cry. You're about to find out why you had to have your heart filled the Holy Ghost. This is the year you find out why. Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor. God told me to tell you everything. Gonna be all right. Somebody shout, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty, give your neighbor a high five, shout neighbor, weeping me, endure for a night, but I shall will come in the morning, yes it will, yes it will.
favor. Look at somebody who looks like they need to help. And say, God told me to tell you, I've got a testimony for you. I got a testimony. Are you ready for it? I said, are you ready for it? What? Just three words. God blocked it. Let me tell somebody on this side. Everything that the enemy has tried to do to you, God told me to tell you, he just blocked it. Can he trust you to worship while you got trouble? Something's going to open up. How many of y'all need God to open something up for you? Oh. Ain't no sense of you acting like it's all right. You wouldn't be praying like you've been praying if it was all right. Oh, how many of you been? You are the master of disguise. You can always act like it's all good. But inside, that's what that's where the deliverance comes from. He who he who has began the good work in me will establish it. To the, he can only establish what he started in you, not what's on you. This don't matter. Can you be trusted with trouble? Hallelujah. We're going home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, we thank you. Nobody else to thank but you. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Lord, we pray. Say, Lord, we pray you. I'm certain I gotta let you go. I'm certain. I'm certain I gotta let you go. Um, I know God wanted me to break the connection that you have to the trouble. Because if you break the connection, it can't continue to send signals. See? It's like having a battery. As long as it's connected to something, it'll charge. But the moment it's disconnected, it can still be powerful, but it ceases to be effective. I want to break the connection between you and the trouble so that it can't keep speaking to you. Because as long as the trouble keeps speaking to you, God can't. And you'll be depressed about a storm that's already passed over. I know that's easy for me to say. You may say, well, you've been through so much stuff. Oh, I haven't been through anything more than you. I've probably overcome more than you. But you've had your fair share, fair share, fair share of trouble. I, I can almost guarantee that. You ain't told me all what you've been through. You married to somebody they don't know everything you've been through. But if I can break the connection between you and the struggle, the struggle is over. Everybody say the struggle is over. God, in the name of Jesus, dismiss us from this place. Break the connection between the struggle and us. And only you can do it. Do it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be dismissed. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't do it enough. Just let the music play.